my first guest tonight is the junior senator from New York. Please welcome Senator Kirsten Gillibrand. <laughs> See you again. Thanks for being here. Oh, my privilege. Thank you. Well, um, uh, I, you're a senator. I want to talk about some of the issues that are facing the country right now that uh, you, you guys in the legislature have to deal with. But first, uh, you're also your fellow Catholic. It's Lent. May I ask what you have given up for Lent? Swearing. <laughs> Get the <laughs> out. <laughs> yes. Really? Yes, yes, it's true. How's it working out? Not well. <laughs> <laughs> what see what uh, when does it uh, most flare up? Uh, daily. <laughs> daily. Uh -huh. Trump tweets. It comes out all the time. Mm -hmm. yeah. I gave up uh, hard liquor. I gave up spirits. How's uh, that going? Uh, I'm cursing a lot. <laughs> um, uh, okay, uh, let's talk about um, let's talk about gun control for a moment. Mm -hmm. Once again, um, a a school. Uh, a close community uh, is shattered by this senseless act of violence that is facilitated by semi-automatic weapons. Um, you've been in D.C. since 2007. Why can't there be any meaningful reform, or even meaningless reform? There's absolutely no action. First, I just want to say that my heart is broken. I mean, this is unfathomable how many deaths we've had to see over and over and over again. And Congress has done nothing. The silence is literally deafening. And they don't get anything done because the NRA has a chokehold on Congress. Uh, the NRA is concerned only with gun sales. It is literally all about money. It is all about greed. It has nothing to do with the Second Amendment. And we've seen death after death after death, and it has to stop. And um, all what, of us... What are, they, what are the people who are uh, beholden to the NRA? What, what, is the, what is the cudgel held over them? Is it the money the NRA gives them, or is it firing up uh, a those concerned or single issue voters on the Second Amendment during the primaries. What what is the? I don't understand what the stick is here. They have so much power that nothing was done after Aurora. Nothing was done after Sandy Hook. Nothing was done after Charleston. Nothing was done after Las Vegas. And nothing is done now. That is the power. It's the power of money. It's the power of communications. It's the fear they instill in members. And it's wrong. It's morally wrong. Now, is it, is it, um... <laughs> is this strictly uh, a Republican problem, or are there Democrats who are beholden to the NRA as well? I think it's a problem, and I can tell you what the solution is. The solution is they need to listen to these kids. They're now starting a movement and taking this into their own hands and speaking truth to power. Because for me, when I, nine years ago, sat down with a mom and a dad who just lost their daughter, their teenage daughter, Nyasia Pryor Yard, to a stray bullet, and I met with her classmates, and the anger and fear and resentment in their community because Congress does nothing made me want to change. And so the solution to this problem, Stephen, is listening to those kids and hearing their pain, their frustration, their anger, and doing something about it. Is that, is that what you, at one time... <laughs> at one time, you had an A rating from the NRA, and now you have an F. Was that the moment that changed... <laughs> changed your mind? Very much so. I, I came from a hunting family, but I can tell you, Stephen, the minute you meet a mom or dad who's lost their child... You know, I recently met a mom who lost her four-year-old son at a park bench in Brooklyn. That's in our neighborhood. That's, that's our community, right there. So we need to do something about it, and I think this whole conversation has a chance of changing because of these kids. Uh, you know, people like Emma Gonzalez telling her story, speaking so forcefully, uh, it, it could change. And, and to shame any member of Congress that takes money from the NRA uh, and calling them out and holding them accountable. 
th this happens not infrequently. That there will be something like whether it's DACA or whether it's uh, universal background checks, where the vast majority of both parties and in individual polls believes that something should happen, and nothing happens in Washington D.C. And then people throw up their hands in despair right. and and kind of lose the force of action because they feel like nothing can be done. You're in Washington. You're in the Senate. Is Washington owned by corporations as we all cynically fear? Well, yeah, I believe that, first of all, we have dark money in politics. We have unlimited um, corporate spending with no accountability, no transparency. So we have to get the money out of politics. Who, 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 what corporations give to you? I've just banned corporate pack checks, actually, um, because I think it's really important that... So you're going to take no corporate money? No corporate money. Is anyone joining you on this bandwagon? I, I believe people have already. Cory Booker joined right away, and so did other people who are already doing it, several of my colleagues. And the reason why I think we have to lead by example on this is because we have to start taking the money out of politics because it undermines our democracy. Money is not speech. I do not believe that the Supreme Court saying money is speech and corporations have the same free speech rights as Americans. That is not true. It is false. We need publicly funded elections. You need to get the soft corruption out. You need to get the hard corruption out. And you need to take away the voice and the, the outsized influence that corporations have over members of Congress, and the NRA is one of the worst offenders. Well, um, on Friday, on Friday, we heard about the uh, uh, Mueller's uh, 13 more indictments of individuals and three of organizations in Russia. Um, and, the, and, and the news continues that Russia is going to try to meddle in the 2018 election as well. You're up for re-election in 2018, aren't you? Mm -hmm. How can we trust the results? Well, uh, we need to take this seriously. Uh, it is outrageous that we now have all of these indictments proving that Russia meddled in our elections, uh, intentionally trying to change voters' minds using social media platforms. Those social media platforms did not see it coming, had no protocols in place to prevent it. We now need transparency and accountability. We now need to make sure that we bring people together, um, not only the state election officials, uh, but these social media platforms. Are they going to be voluntary or is it going to be regulation? We need to have regulation. We need to know exactly how to stop uh, this outside uh, foreign money coming into elections, which is illegal. And the fact that our president has done nothing, literally nothing, is outrageous. It's a failure of leadership. Um, uh, before we got to go here, just a minute. Before we go, I'm going to talk about Me Too for just a second. You've been called the Me Too senator. Um, you've been very outspoken about sexual abuse, sexual harassment in the workplace. You were the first person to call for Al Franken to leave the Senate. Mm -hmm. Have you spoken with Al since that happened? Yes, yes. He was still served for a few more weeks mm -hmm. um, before he resigned. And what, what, what he, he begrudgingly stepped down, saying clearly not happy about it, saying that he, what he'd been accused of, he had not done. Um, what, what, how did you explain to him that it was important that he stepped down? Because a lot of progressives uh, were angry at you for leading that, for losing uh, a voice like uh, Senator Franken's in the Senate over something that hadn't gone through the ethics investigation. What, what, what did you say to him? Or how, how would you say, to, say it right now? Well, the way I looked at this, there was eight allegations, credible allegations, I believe the women. And to me, enough was enough. I have two young sons, one who's nine and one who's 14, and how am I supposed to describe to them that it's okay to squeeze a woman here and okay to grab a woman there, but it's not okay to grab a woman there? Like, that is not a conversation as a mother I thought was appropriate to be having with a 14-year-old boy. Um, none of it's okay, Stephen. None of it's okay. No, I, I understand. And, I understand and it's not okay. And, and it's, it's important to say it's wrong even when it's somebody you like, somebody you care about, somebody you consider a friend. You have to speak out. You have to say it's not okay. And it's painful, especially when it's your friend. But you can't say something like it's okay as long as you're my friend. Like, that's the problem with it. And I had to be heard. I, I had to say how I felt about it because I can't be a good mother and I can't be a good leader on these issues if I don't speak that very hard truth. Well, Senator, thank you so much for being here. It was lovely to talk to you. Thank about. you, Stephen. Senator Kirsten Gillibrand, everybody. We'll be right back with Chris Gethard.